notice is hereby given in accordance with the provisions of Mass General Law, Chapter 48B, sub chapter five, known as the Massachusetts Community Preservation Act. Uh, and it requires that community preservation will hold a public informational hearing uh, tonight, seven o'clock. Uh, we'll discuss needs, possibilities, and resources of the town regarding community preservation. We will not be accepting applications for potential CPC participation, but we'll hear proposals to assess, uh, assess conformity within the uh, Community Preservation Act. Proposals that do conform will be posted on a uh, placed on a future agenda. We'll discuss and review comments of the public regarding the use of monies in the Act Fund for acquisition, creation of open space, the preservation of open space for the acquisition, creation and preservation of historic resources, for acquisition, creation and preservation of land for recreation use, for the creation, preservation and support of community housing, of a rehabilitation or re restoration of such of open space, historic resources, land for recreational and community housing uh, that is acquired or created as provided in the CPA. Uh, why don't we throw the uh, election to the end? I shouldn't probably use the term throw the election because that has a whole different meaning these days, doesn't it? Uh, okay, so uh, is Mike there? Not Coughlin or Cameron rather? Mike? There he comes. Um, there he is. There he is. Mark, I'm sorry. Mark. <laughs> there you are. You're muted, Mark. Sorry about that. Good afternoon. Good evening. Um, so I'm part of the town hall building committee and um, just wanted to reach out and, and give you folks an update on where we stand with our project. And if, uh, if there are any uh, questions you guys may have, but uh, currently right now we're um, nearing the end of our design for the town hall uh, building down on the common. And it's a partial, it's a restoration of the 1800s structure and a, um, a demolition of the 1980s and a, and a rebuild of a new addition there. Um, and we understand that uh, CPC was kind enough to uh, allocate or support money in the past uh, attributed to the 1980s portion and the historic preservation restoration of that building. Uh, so right now we are still working through our design process and we will in the next several months we will be going through the exercises of putting an estimate and getting bids together from contractors. We're going to be dealing with the old town hall, not the 1980s. Correct, one. correct. Uh, uh, hello, Carolyn, how are you? Um, Great, thanks. Can you introduce yourself and give Sorry. us your name I, for the record? Uh, Carolyn Coffey, also a member of the town hall rebuilding committee. Okay, all right. Um, have you a timeline when you may have stuff uh, well, actually, uh, cut. We'll jump it a bit. Do you think this is going to be ready for town meeting in the fall? Uh, it will not. It will not be ready for town meeting in the fall. We are at this point. We're looking at uh, the earliest would be spring town meeting of 2023. Okay. Um, any figures that we can? No, we we had the overall project budget in the um, 18 to 20 range. The last time we looked at an estimate, that was the overall. And um, and we know that this CPC funds are, are only um, being geared towards the, uh, the 1800s structure. So when we do this next estimate in this round, we're gonna make sure too that we separate out the two buildings as well. Uh, 18 to 20, I assume you're meaning mil a million. Millions, yes. Considerable increase from what we had seen a few years ago. Well, that includes all the soft costs too. That's not just the general, that's not the specific uh, hard construction costs. That includes all the, the moving design fees, 
uh, and owners, project manager, architect, design team, all of those uh, groups as well. How much for the building itself? Uh, the building itself was uh, in the 12, 10 to 12 million range, if I recall correctly from the last time. Mm -hmm. Is that still the case? Uh, we have not done a new estimate to in, in, a, in about a year now to change that number. So we've what we've done over the course of time here is we've taken the estimate that we did a while back and we've escalated it up through similar to uh, current market conditions, okay. what we're seeing in escalation through the construction industry. Because it's, it's rather costly to do an estimate itself. So um, we're at that, we had to get to the point where we are further along with this design to put a number to it to give a, a most accurate, proper number. Okay. Does anybody on the committee have any questions? Carolyn, could I ask you, uh, what do you think you will be able to do this time that did not work the last time? Um, well, the, the, I guess the difference uh, is <laughs> from the last time in terms of general uh, purposing is the second floor of Old Town Hall is being populated with office space as it is currently in, in, in today's current condition. Um, so we, we looked at the needs of uh, the town in terms of headcount and office space and, and square footage needed. And the, uh, the addition that we need is uh, a little bit larger than the addition that we currently have. Um, the second floor uh, of Old Town Hall is very restrictive in its layout because of the structural trusses that uh, occupy that building. So um, the intent isn't even, it is not of uh, the historic, it's not to gut and completely renovate it, it's to preserve it. So it's, it's following the preservation guidelines rather than a full gut and renovation. I, I was actually addressing this to Carolyn, oh. in, involved in both things. And I'm wondering from a marketing standpoint, or a political standpoint, yeah. how is this outcome likely to be different? Mark, Tom was on the committee with me last time. So, <laughs> so he suffered uh, as we did. Um, and, and I think the different last time, um, <clears throat> uh, there were lots of questions about uh, how much it would cost to just renovate the building. And uh, capital budget, you I'm sure remember, did not feel we had done enough homework to answer that question. Um, and um, there were also questions about the design itself with regard to the efficiency of space usage, as Mark mentioned, the second floor, but also there were hallways that, you know, similar to what we have now. Um, and I think that the current design um, is, is incredibly efficient. The, when you, um, look at the new addition, the the door faces the side of the parking lot. And so when you walk in, you'd go straight into a lobby where the uh, doors to the three um, downstairs offices are and the doors to the auditorium are straight ahead of you. The only thing off to the side are the elevators and the bathrooms. Um, it's just a very efficient design. It's also incredibly flexible. That was a problem uh, in the last one. Uh, with this design, the only fixed spaces are the elevator and two columns. And so as the needs of the town change, walls can be taken down, moved, what have you. So um, hopefully we don't end up, you know, 40 years from now, wanting to make changes and not being able to like we are right now. Um, and, uh, and we did do the homework on how much it would cost to renovate the building. Uh, we also did some homework on changing the layout and what if we shrunk the footprint a little because the footprint is what's driving the cost of the addition. And because the high ticket items remain like staircases and elevators and everything, even shrinking the footprint, messed up the design, uh, moved things around and saved us barely any money. So we, we feel like we've done the homework that was required of us and hopefully that will help market it. As you recall at town meeting, it did pass. It was just the debt exclusion that, that people didn't understand and, and that's gonna be 
uh, an issue again, and uh, we will have to do a better job making sure people understand it's going to be a two-part process if, in fact, it ends up being financed that way, which we presume will be the case. Yeah. Yeah. The problem last time was uh, people going around saying no override, uh, which was, I mean, honestly, it was true. There wasn't going to be an override. Uh, <laughs> and that, that's something that, you know, yeah. I found extremely disappointing, this information, uh, gutting the work that you guys put into it is inexcusable. So hopefully we can get people to understand actually what's going on this time. Mm -hmm. And to help and to help people understand, it's not a it's not a zero sum option here. This is, the option of doing nothing is going to allow the building to further deteriorate. And so that's the you know there's an importance of us preserving what we have and and getting that and handling it sooner rather than later before the, the repairs become even more costly. Sure, sure. Okay, uh, Eric. There you are. Eric, do you have any questions? No. Nope. Okay. Uh, Jenny? No, Russ, thank you. Marianne? No, thank you for your presentation. Uh, Corey? Yeah, just quickly, um, if I recall the last, when I, my first meeting with CPC, so thanks everybody for, for having me. Um, the Previously, I think it was the CPC contribution was five or five and a half, is that? You said, Mark, there's not a really good projection yet, but do you, is that kind of the same range just so we can know what we can expect, you know, six months from now? So I, I wasn't on the last round, but I remember hearing it was around four or four and a half um, in the last, the last round of, of this years ago. Um, yeah. I, and obviously, to nobody's surprise, the construction costs from the last time CPC was able and willing to contribute money, um, the cost of, of the construction have skyrocketed since then. So, um, you, you know, again, it's at, at this point, you know, we'll, we'll, we will address what um, and analyze what the historic portion of the project will cost. And we'll present that to CPC and uh, at, at CPC's uh, discretion, you know, whatever we can get, we'll be more than grateful and happy to receive. So. Uh, All right, thank you. I don't, in short, I don't think hitting the four or five million will be a problem. You no, know, the only thing that has changed from the last time uh, potential would be the bond market because uh, we were going to bond a good chunk of it last time. And who knows what bond rates are going to do? John, John Galbraith had a great quote. He said, when it comes to predicting interest rates, there are two types of people, those who don't know what rates are going to do and those who don't know that they don't know what rates are going to do. So we'll have to kind of hang tight and hope for the best. Um, anything else, Corey? You said, okay. Michael. I'm good, thanks, Russ. Okay, uh, Chris, any questions at this point? Nothing there, thank you. Uh -huh. Tom? Okay. Uh, you know, I, 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 it's fair to say that you'll more than likely have the support of this committee uh, what we got to work out is just dollar amounts and you know hopefully we can get this done in the spring because I, I think the longer it goes um, the more resistance you're going to run into and people are going to start saying we don't need it uh, and I'd hate to see that happen is you, know, you the, I don't know how many meetings you've had since that last one but that last one you guys are meeting every 10 or 20 minutes it seemed mm. uh, and I felt <laughs> bad when it went down uh, and uh, just in terms of the overall financing for the, the project as a whole, you know, we've we realized that heading into um, the fall town meeting here, which is going to be early December, that, um, you know, the, as the as this this long range capital planning exists and, you know, we were uh, short some resources on the town side on a, on a finance department side that um, the timing just for us to answer the question of how the overall project was going to be funded, needed a little bit more time. Sure. Uh, from our point too, uh, one of the major changes that's happened to the CPA since we did this the last time was back then, I think our state match was in the teens, somewhere around that. Uh, they've changed things in the legislature and we should be seeing uh, matching funds of 28, 30% somewhere in there. 
consistently. So uh, even if rates go up, we still are going to have the ability to make a good bond payment. Uh, it's going to not. It's not going to. It's going to wipe us out on on cash. Uh, but we get a million plus a year, uh, so we can catch up with that pretty quick. Uh, and we can, you know, keep a bond payment without crippling our, uh, ourselves in the future. Uh, Eric, I see your lips moving. Uh, I don't see you anymore, Eric. Okay. Uh, no one else has any questions? No. Okay. Carolyn, Mark, thank you yep. very much. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Um, actually, you. Well, I was just, if the library's up next, um, I'm here with Megan too. Oh, okay. We'll do that next. Well, next after this. I, I meant to do this at the beginning. We have some new members uh, with us. Uh, Chris Plex uh, is representing the planning board. And Chris, you want to tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure, happy to. <clears throat> uh, my wife and I have been in Cohasset for about 15 years now, we live on Pleasant Street. Uh, <clears throat> started getting involved with the planning board uh, the way a lot of people do, which was uh, we had some projects in our neighborhood that we were concerned with, so we spoke up. Uh, I got a sense of how the board worked and then an opening popped up and on we went. Uh, I've got two kids in school here in Cohasset, one in second grade, one in fifth grade. We've also got two dogs who are not in schools here in Cohasset, uh, but uh, happy to join the Community Preservation Committee and help any way I can. Oh, great, we're glad to have you. It's, it's a good group of people, as you know. We we cover uh, Tom, uh, Michael, and I are the only ones who are citizens at large. Uh, but uh, Michael's on the uh, ZBA, uh, and Tom is still plugging away at his job. So we, uh, while we may not be on committees, we we're, we're pushing ourselves around along too. Um, Corey Evans. You don't need to tell us what board you're representing if you don't want to, but we can all guess. Corey's uh, our new uh, representative. And Corey, your turn. Yeah, uh, uh, thanks, Russ. Um, and uh, yeah, just thrilled to, to be able to be a part of these conversations. Um, I've always loved kind of the stuff that CPC does. I mean, when it comes to just, I mean, it's, this is almost like the fun playground where we get to fund stuff that really matters to the community. And I like the mechanism. I like um that the stuff that could easily be ignored but it's our job to make sure it's not so i love that and i'm just uh, thrilled to be part of this um i am on the select board i'm going to my or i'm in my third year currently so um just uh really looking forward to working with everybody thank you yeah, we're glad to have you on too um merle uh brown is joining us but merle uh doesn't zoom so <laughs> i'm going to pretend i'm merle um Years ago, I nominated Merle for Citizen of the Year. And uh, in my nomination, I said it would be easier to list the committees he hasn't been on than the ones he has. Uh, Merle was a multi-term uh, selectman. Uh, I worked with him on the Haggerty Project at uh, Mariners Park on the end of the street. He was involved in Boy Scouts. He's involved in recycling. Uh, you name it, Merle's got his finger in it. Uh, good guy. Um, we got to get him a six-year-old to run his computer and he can join us on Zoom. Uh, but until then, uh, he, he, he won't be here tonight. Uh, and I think uh, that's pretty much it for new people. Uh, but just so Chris um, and Corey, if you have any questions, Jenny, tell us a little bit about yourself. Oh, hi, I represent the Echo Asset Housing Authority. I'm a member of the board as the tenant representative. I previously served on the board as an elected representative. And I have, a, when we get to it, a couple of thoughts. But I, I would like to report that of the two grants that we are currently operating under from the CPC, we received bids for the roof of the community building lower than we thought. <laughs> and that's going ahead this fall. And um, we're going to start in a week on the other project for decks. We're, and uh, do if it. You can hold just for a second. I want to sure. let the other people introduce themselves to Yep. And, Corey. and then we'll, uh, well, we'll hit the library, then we'll hit. That was an inadvertent hand motion, sorry. That's no, okay. Uh, Mary Ann, you give a quick rundown on uh, what you have done with the town and your involvement with CPC. 
Hi, my name is Marianne Weatherall. I've been living in Cohasset for about 13 years. I live on Regate Lane. Um, I've lived in another part of town as well. So I've seen a couple different sides of the community. I was previously on um, conservation for a few years with Eric. I joined here on CPC from Open Space and Recreation. I'm also on the Central Cemetery Board as well and involved in uh, some conservation activities. Uh, I have one child and he's not in the school system here, but we're active in all sports in the community as well. And I enjoy very much being part of CPC because there's so many um, activities and organizations that benefit from this historically and environmentally. So I appreciate being here. Thank you. Thank you. Michael. Uh, Michael Dickey, uh, Paula, my wife and I have been in town, I think, since 06. Uh, you can do the math. Um, I, I first got involved with the uh, CPC when, uh, as the uh, planning board uh, representative on the CPC. Uh, really uh, in, enjoyed, in, enjoyed that uh, process. Uh, certainly have enjoyed uh, working with uh, Russ as chair and also the other members over the time. Uh, I left the planning board and then uh, Russ asked me to come back uh, as uh, a, a, a kind of citizen at large. Uh, I also kind of at the same time uh, got hooked into the uh, ZBA as well. So currently sitting on the ZBA and uh, I, I like giving away money more than uh, the ZBA, but don't tell Woody that, okay? <laughs> Over the year, that's the plus about the CPA or the CPC. People are happy because they're asking us for money. You know, it's after we give them the money that they start talking nasty about us. Uh, Tom. Um, I've been in Cohasset since uh, I was born. I was actually born here. I have four grown children, three of whom with their families live in Cohasset, and the fourth is moving to Cohasset next month. So we have 13 grandchildren going through the school system, and I care a lot about how uh, Cohasset functions. I've been on the advisory committee as you heard, I was on the town hall committee before. This is a great community. I'm thrilled to be part of it. And the fact that the kids who had lived all over the world, actually, have come back to have their children bring them up here says a lot, I think. So thrilled to be Great. Uh, Eric? Uh, Eric Eisenhower. I've, um, I'm the CONCOM representative. I've been on the Conservation Commission for five and a half years. Uh, I served as chair. I'm on the board of directors of Holly Hill Farm. Um, let me see what else. We moved here from Europe uh, 13, 14 years ago. And I love the work we do. And I'm very, very glad we can make such a positive contribution to the lives, not just of the, the young, but also of the elderly and, and the citizen at large in, in Cohasset. So thank you for allowing me to be on your uh, commission, Russ. Uh, obviously, I'm Russ Benetti. Uh, I've been here. Oh, I 35 years. Um, I was on the Government Island Study Committee. Uh, I was one of the founding members of the Harbor Health Committee. I uh, was on and chaired the uh, Haggerty Committee, which is the end of the street where uh, Mariners Park was, uh, which was 12 years. Uh, I've been on the CPA and chairing it for the last 12 years. Uh, I always say that this is the best committee in the town, and I, I mean it. Uh, only because so many of you guys are already giving time to the town and that you're willing to find some some room in your lives to um, give more time is, is admirable. I never had kids, so I don't have that uh, pressure to balance the family against, uh, against what I might want to do as a volunteer. Uh, so I, I really admire you people for taking that time. So, anyway, now everybody knows everybody. Uh, we'll move on to the library. Um, whoever wants to go first, uh, state your name and your address for the record. Um, my name is Megan James. I am the library director for the past three years. Um, the library is at the final stages of our uh, design, thanks to Chris McFarland, for an outdoor patio space and a small amphitheater for programming outside and also some for the, the patio, some, some seating. 
uh, to enjoy uh, looking out into Sawyer Street. Um, as you, most of you know, we've been using a tent um, since COVID to have our outdoor programming. And this is for um, all ages, children, adults, um, older adults, teens, um, and it's been very well received. We're, we've been recently working on our strategic plan. And one of the number one things that came back in our survey is that the library needs outdoor space, which is fantastic because we were already working on creating a de design for that. Um, so as we near the, the end of our design, uh, we're starting to talk about financing our project. Um, we have some finances that the library has um, accumulated over the years from the state. Uh, we've received some monies um, from the music circus. Um, and so we're hoping to uh, gain the support of the CPC as well. Um, we see this project as something that's for the entire community that all of community services can use, the Boy Scouts can use, the Girl Scouts can use. Um, just a nice space that um, I think is lacking uh, through town a little bit and um, on another need that we have is our current programming space inside the library is um, becoming a little bit small for us, which is a great problem to have. So to have that outdoor space is a nice expansion um, that's financially um, responsible um, without creating an addition to the library or something like that. So um, I'm happy to take questions. We're very excited about this project. We find that it's, we can be very cost-effective with it, make a really nice space um, and uh, really up the profile of the library and all the wonderful things that we do. Works better if I unmute. Uh, anybody have any questions? Jenny? Oh, where is this located exactly on the grounds? Sure, so this is facing Sawyer Street. So um, if you're looking at uh, the light, it's the space between the, the traffic light and the shared parking lot with recreation down below. It has a little bit of a slope to it. Okay, thank you. Marianne. Have we received a proposal for this or you're-, you're um, This is something that's time. going to come in. Okay, so uh, it's coming in. Okay. We're just general questions and seeing mm -hmm. uh, applicability tonight. Okay. It seems very necessary and I'll be interested in looking at it and about how much will you be estimating that you'll be needing? Um, so we have a, a, a ballpark right now. We don't really know because of we haven't chosen materials yet, but we're thinking anywhere between the mid 300,000s to the high 300,000s. Thank you. Will be the total project cost. Yes. Uh, Jenny, you had your hand up. I, yeah, is that a large enough space? a deep enough space for what you're planning? Um, yeah, so we think so. The patio stretches out. We've done a space study. Um, we've also done a sun study because that's very important for this project. Um, but the space study, the patio will hold, um, I believe, Carolyn, it was 96 chairs. Um, so we feel as though that's a good enough space. And then also down below, there will be an, a small amphitheater, which will hold another 50 people. So. We feel that um, anything in excess of that, people can bring towels or their own chairs or something and sit out on the on the, um, the lawn space as well. Um, and we know that kids love to sit on the ground and and um, that's a good space. For them. So we do feel like it's a, a good um, uh, seating capacity. There's also a, um, a low wall all the way around the patio um, that could seat an additional um, 30 or 40 people. Michael? Uh, what, what other sources of funding are you looking at? Um, so we've reached out to a few community groups. Um, we have received funding from uh, the Music Circus. Um, we do have some state funds that we've um, held over the years. Um, and our CLT, so our Cohasset um, Library Trust Group is coming up with a fundraising plan uh, this Friday um, to start um, fundraising uh, the last piece of what we might need. Great, great, thank you. Thanks. Corey? That was my question, so uh, I already got my answer. Thank you. All right, Chris. I, I can't help but put on my planning board hat and just encourage you to be thinking about how to think about the kids running around excited about what, whatever's going on in the amphitheater, just thinking about 
the flow of people, making sure that the walls are sufficient for kids like my younger child who's a little rambunctious and loves to scare people and run off toward the cars. So just encourage you to keep that in mind, but it sounds like a great project. Absolutely. I have one of those too, Chris, one of those children <laughs> like to run away. So I'll certainly keep it in mind. <laughs> Mr. Reardon. All set. Okay. Eric? I have no questions at, yet. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. You know, it's, I think it would be a good yeah. thing. Uh, just, you know, put some figures together. They don't have to be exact. Um, rough drawing of how things are going to fit. Again, you know, we don't need elevations and all that stuff. So don't waste a lot of money drawing that up. Um, when is the earliest you think you might be able to make a more formal presentation? Um, whenever you're ready for it. Uh, we are, we're pretty far along. We have one of those drawings with the elevations in it. Um, okay. <laughs> All right, we'll, we'll take it. We just won't make you get one. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, okay. So uh, I feel fairly prepared, um, and I can put a presentation together from whatever your next meeting is. Um, okay. Yeah, because we're you know, we're looking at December for town meeting. Um, mm -hmm. We have to get stuff through advisory and the board of selectmen uh, with plenty of time. Um, I usually am in there in the last minute. Uh, every year I swear I won't do it again and they've yet to catch on that I'm usually lying and probably will be late again so uh, I'd like to start a, a, our meetings more uh, along the lines of the next couple of weeks and we'll we'll talk about that once all the presentations and we'll figure out what our what our plans are looking like um, okay no other questions I don't see any thank you thank you appreciate thank you. you guys coming in uh who is waiting in the uh in the queue so you have um ronnie mcmorris and sarah croson okay bring who them in you? bring them both okay i think they're on on the same uh item okay are they here Okay, Ronnie, where's your, there you go. Oh, no, that's not Ronnie. <laughs> I don't see Ronnie. Oh, hang on. There she is. All right. There Hi, Ronnie. Go. Hi, Ross, how are you? Good, how are you well, doing? I'm good, and it's good to see the members of the committee. Um, I just wanted to say before we get started with our presentation, my daughter, Sarah Crossan, is also joining. I'm feeling a little emotional right now <clears throat> because back when I was on the board of selectmen, I had heard about this thing called the Community Preservation Act. And I've never been to a meeting of the Community Preservation Committee. This is my first one. And I thought, boy, this sounds like something that's gonna be really good for the town of Cohasset. And I got together with my friend, Debbie Cook, and we put together a little group and I drafted some petitions and the next thing I know, the town of Cohasset has opted into this great new program called the Community Preservation Act. And so it is so rewarding to me to be participating and seeing all that has been done in this community as a result of some, you know, just, oh, gee, maybe we should get together and do this because it seems like it's going to be good for the town in the future. So that being said, um, I really do appreciate the opportunity to come in front of the group. I'm here basically as an assist with my daughter, Sarah. Um, Sarah's recently moved back to Cohasset. She lives on Dome Street as well. And we've been spending a lot of time. Sarah's got a two-year-old toddler up at the Beachwood Playground. And I really wish that Merle had been here because Merle is, in addition to sort of being the mayor of, of Beachwood, he knows a lot about um, the whole renovation of the ball field, as well as when that current playground was put in. And my understanding is it was recycled from the wear guard factory and placed into that area. And it has definitely served the neighborhood well over the years, but it is time for it to be replaced. So again, I'm gonna turn it over to Sarah. I'm here to assist her. We're at the very beginning stages of trying to put together a group to look into it. 
and understand whether this is something the community preservation committee might be interested in supporting. Uh, and uh, just to interrupt for a second, uh, Ronnie, like she says, has a, has been instrumental in getting CPA here. Uh, Murrow, by the way, had also been on the CPA. Uh, so we're, we're getting lot, lots of veterans here tonight. <laughs> okay, sorry, Sarah, go ahead. Oh, thank you. Um, thank you for having me. And thank you um, for Corey, to Corey for suggesting that we join the meeting tonight. Um, I'm really excited to be back in Cohasset after growing up on Doan Street and um, moving back to Doan Street with my family. And um, we've really enjoyed all of our time up at the beach playground since we've been back. It was something that didn't exist when I was growing up. So it's been really nice to just have the space for my children to use. I've met a lot of other parents and grandparents since we've been up there. Um, you know, we all kind of agree it's a, a really, it's a great place to have in the neighborhood. Um, but you know, it's just, it's something that could really use a replacement at this point. Um, I think one of the other big pieces that we feel would be make the space more usable, um, and more user-friendly would be to have some shade and some trees because especially in the summertime, it was, you know, that certain times of day were, you know, early morning and late afternoon were really the only times it was usable due to the, the heat and the sun. Um, so I think that's something that we would like to see as part of the project. Um, like my mom said, we're just really kind of in the initial phases of thinking about it um, and what would be required. I have done a little research into some companies. There's a local company in Newton that um, uses a lot of eco-friendly recycled plastic uh, materials, which are very sustainable. Um, so they, I know they do some free, they'll send a consultant out to do some like a free estimate just to get an idea of the space and, you know, what might work there and an idea of the cost. So we haven't quite reached that stage yet, but we kind of wanted to just um, use this as a jumping off point to see if this is something that your committee might be able to assist in funding us for. So I don't have, know if you have any. Have you talked with Chris? Uh, if, if on town owned property, uh, we certainly get involved in it all the time. Uh, but they're requesting that it goes through town hall first, just okay. to see if there are any capital budget plans that might address what's going to be going on there. Um, so a good place to start will be by, you know, let, giving Chris a head. Or did you talk to him, Corey? I've been in, in conversation with Chris about this as well. And just okay. to watch out for uh, if there were any funds in um, you know, you know, DPW or whatever, for this thing. And, and so far, uh, there's nothing that's coming down the pike immediately um, for something like this that I'm aware of. So, okay. All right. Now, um, I assume you're going to make it mass uh, handicap compliant, the new playground? Yeah, it sounds like the, I mean, the company that I was looking into, I know that they are, they have ADA compliant, um, like picnic tables and things like that. Right. But are they mass? compliant because ADA um, you can qualify under ADA okay not under mass okay uh, we had a problem um was it Deer Hill I think Michael yeah we sunk 60 65 thousand dollars into the playground uh okay. later found out that it was ADA approved uh which didn't mean anything because it wasn't mass approved okay and we ended up spending another 40 or 50 to undo what we had done okay so that's that's a that's a big one okay uh, there was a group that was going around i think they've kind of cooled their heels since the pandemic uh but they were going into towns and they were um seeing what playgrounds were like and how they were compliant uh and which is fine uh i parted company with them when what they would do then rather than contacting the town and say you have this issue this issue this issue okay they went right to the mass handicap and the town got a letter giving them i think a month to okay. cure everything or face some outrageous fine okay uh, so that one you need to tread real carefully okay on. that's good to know yeah yeah 
Yeah, I, I, I'll second that, Russ. I remember that. And uh, there's no question, uh, it, there's a more strict rules at the state level than at the federal level. And you want to make sure that uh, you true up to the more restrictive or okay. all of the all of the effort you put in to be ADA compliant can be for naught. Okay, thank you. Um, questions, Jenny? No, I think it's a great idea though. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Mary Ann. Sorry. Um, no, I was just thinking about wheelchair accessible and I was looking for the name of a woman who runs an organization in the state of Massachusetts who's very focused on playgrounds being um, accessible to children in wheelchairs from um, swing sets to just climbing on gyms. So I think um, as Russ said, you need to look at the full scope of this from all, all, all sections, um, before presenting, but, okay. um, I'm familiar with that playground and I love that playground. And I think, um, it sounds like that area of town is, is being revitalized. So I like seeing it. That is probably of all the CPA playground type grants. Uh, the most used of them. Uh, oddly enough, <laughs> at the time, and I was arguing about it uh, back then, as I was on CPA, uh, CPC, it was also a, uh, I don't want to say illegal, but a uh, not allowable use of CPA money because uh, you had to uh, buy the property as recreation with CPA funds in order to fix it with CPA funds. Uh, that is no longer the case. Uh, but yeah, that's a great playground. It gets more use than most any of the other ones in, in town. Uh, Corey? Uh, no questions. I just want to thank Sarah and, and Ronnie for, for being here. And, and, you know, again, seeing from this side, the best outcomes are always when local, you know, just residents and neighbors get together and are willing to, you know, put in their, their passion. So thank you for for doing this and I hope we can, you know, help it move along for sure. Thank you. Michael, anything else? No, no, uh, but it's uh, definitely one of these things that I think uh, CPC was designed to help with. So look forward to yeah. the presentation. Yeah, Chris, oh, Marianne, uh, you put your hand up. Um, Sorry, the organization's called the Play Brigade and they do inclusion playgrounds. And they work right. in the state of Massachusetts. It's Clay G-A-D-E. Okay, great. Okay. Thanks, Thank Mary. Thank you. All right. Sorry, Chris. No, I, it sounds like a great project. Uh, the only thing I have to add is that we do have an application in front of the planning board right now to renovate the Beachwood General Store. Mm -hmm. So as you're thinking about how that area mm -hmm. is being revitalized, that's just something to keep in mind. I, I don't think yes. it's a pro or a con, just something that I wanted to make sure you were aware of. Tom? No, I'm good. Thank you. Okay, Eric? Nothing dead. No? All right. Um, like I say, we'll figure out some schedules. How? Well, I, I, talk to Chris and just, you know, tell him that we've discussed it. And I'll be talking with him as well in a positive way and have him give you the whatever blessing he gives so that we can get involved with this. I think it'd be a great program. I have a question, Russ. Uh -huh. In terms of um, how the CPA operates, is there funding separate? Is there a separate request for funding for design, or can there be a request for funding for design and and the play? I'm just not quite sure because we're at the very beginning stages. Yeah, yeah. I'd like to work with somebody who does more of a sort of a, looking at the natural setting and and just doing mm -hmm. more than just putting in playground equipment, but doing a design right. for the area. Yeah, we can we can include design on it. Okay. Uh, do you know Francesca Arnold? I know the name. It sounds she because she uh, Ralph Tullio, okay. uh, or Ralph Tullio rather, uh, were very involved in the Deer Hill uh, project, and okay. they would be good people to to track down and and see uh, you know any suggestions they may have as well. Thank you, Ronnie. <laughs> I I know her very well. If you need an introduction, she'd, okay, be, no. she'd be very happy to help. Okay, thanks. Okay, great. Well, 
We'll get in touch with you soon. We'll give you a date. Great. Appreciate Great. it. Thank you yep. so much Take for your time. For we appreciate in. it. Say hi to David, Ronnie. Will do. Thank you. Uh -huh. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Rusty. Hey. Oops, sorry. Sorry, I just I had one thing um, in relation to um, actually the, the senior housing. So if uh, Virginia's going ahead, I wanted to just tee off that for another thing that's on the radar. Okay, so uh, Jenny. Um, as I said before, oh, yeah. we'll be happy to know that we're moving right ahead on the two funding projects um, that are on the books right now. Uh, they should be completed, both completed this fall, the community building roof and 64 window and door assemblies and 32 new decks. Um, so major projects. Um, Recently, we have two or three ideas, but the highest priority probably recently, we discovered that we had a water leak and also discovered gates were. <laughs> we have 16 buildings and we presume eight gates. If, if each gate covers two buildings or not, because we seem to get a great variation in water, uh, water bills. Uh, Anyway, that had to be replaced. And we're thinking that after 45 years, we ought to locate and probably replace the other gates um, to the water meters. Because um, leaks can be really devastating in these buildings. And another possible project is replacing there are about 40 outdoor lights and stanchions. Um, that are becoming a little decrepit. I think they were, some of the work was done 12 years ago uh, with help from Mass Save. They're no longer in good condition. They're not bright enough. Some of them are uh, being held together with tape and they are an important feature, uh, safety feature on the site. I think that would probably be <laughs> I guess my question is, um, would these be eligible under CPC funding? I would think that the lights, uh, because of the safety issue, uh, would be. Uh, there will probably be some discussion as to whether the leaks are a result of the lack of maintenance, um, or it's just, you know, it's been so long, yeah. things wear out. Um, but, uh, you know, the rest of it, I, windows and stuff like that, you can always do it under increasing the energy efficiency of the property. Uh, we've done, we did the storm doors. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Well, the, the current grant is, is covering the windows. Um, mm -hmm. we do have another, uh, we received a $20,000 grant from the affordable energy committee and they are anxious for us to find some uh, matching funding. And their idea is that this would be to install two batteries that would operate for three days maximum during a power outage. We also do have that large generator uh, from the town when we want it and that we pay for. Um, but their idea is to buy one set of batteries and see if they can be attached or installed in an apartment building and serve as a, as a three-day resource for energy and in, in a power outage. Um, Taffy and I talked about this. She's not really sure it could be done uh, or should be, but that that is another idea too, so. Um, Corey? Um, I'm the liaison at the AEC and I've been part of the, those conversations a bit. So if there's any mm -hmm. information I can expand upon that idea and happy to if the committee would like. Yes, I'd like to hear it too. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Chris has a question though, Chris. I don't want to jump in. No, I, uh, it, during my day job, I work for Eversource and one of the yeah. biggest parts of our business right now is the energy efficiency program. So Eversource does not cover Cohasset, but National Grid does under the same rules that Eversource has. So there are funds specifically set aside for energy efficiency. 
and also additional funds set aside for the low income programs. Uh, for the lighting in particular, it wouldn't surprise me if you could get that replaced for free under those programs. But I would encourage you to talk with National Grid and have somebody come out and look around and see what other opportunities there might be to add some efficiency. The batteries might be a little bit of a stretch, but it's worth talking to them about the lighting. And I would also encourage you to talk to them about uh, HVAC. There is a big push right now to move to heat pumps. So that might be another opportunity for you. If you need we it. do have heat pumps. Uh, okay. Well, what do we call them? They're outside units that pump into uh, They're heat one pumps. wall unit okay. in the, in the yep. apartments. Those are maybe four or five years old now, not, not older than that. So. If you need help getting in contact at National Grid, I'm happy to help. Thank you very much. Yeah, and, and on the yeah, on the battery project. So as as Virginia mentioned, um, when we have often uh, <laughs> power outages here in Cohasset, there is a portable generator that can be hooked up um, to the Cohasset Housing Authority property on Elm Street, uh, and it does a, a, a good job. But there is a delay, and there are potential <laughs> issues when it comes to you know if we have a, a storm where uh, trees are blocking, there's there's problems, and this generator is also in demand for other parts of town. So um, the great people at AEC were able to apply for a grant with uh, Massachusetts Emergency, maybe it wasn't a MEMA, but it was a, one of the emergency agencies uh, to get, I believe, two batteries, which would, uh, the idea would be to cover uh, heat, which are heat pumps, so electric heat and lighting in the common areas. And that would allow, uh, yeah, I think two to three days of uh, backup immediate. Um, that way all the residents would have a place to stay warm, uh, charge devices, you know, congregate. Um, without having to tie up a portable generator or worry about getting it there or refill it with diesel or as uh, have it paid for these batteries would be you know once they're installed they're pretty much good to go uh, so the idea would be if uh, some funds could be stacked you can expand that to um, this the the new building or extend the time or maybe even uh, allow certain apartments within the areas to also be served by that backup power and if we're doing one installation um, it's it it makes sense to try to if you're going to do two batteries you're doing three at the same time um, you know kind of makes a lot of sense so that's uh, the question is can CPC funding be used for that and if so you know it just turns a, a good thing into even a better thing from from the, from AC's perspective. I guess I would have a question I, of, of how practical it would be to try to equip 16 buildings that run right up the street basically they're. Uh, if anybody's been to 60 Elm Street and seen the layout, it's not uh, it's not a usual layout. It's up and down hills and, and uh, it would really have to have a study to see if it actually would be feasible to do that for the buildings. We did have the large generator and they left it there and didn't never charged us for that all winter, um, which worked out very well too, so. Um, Russ, and um, I have a question and not, not to offend you, Virginia, but can we consider projects and for CPC funding from organizations that we are currently funding and, or sh and wait till those projects have been completed before we continue to fund them? Oh yeah. A question. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and we do it all the time. Uh, but you know, I would think we would be looking at them on a case by case basis. We don't want to, have a whole lot of unfinished projects uh, out there under one one umbrella, so to speak. But uh, Historic Society, we've funded them year after year after year. Uh, and uh, some of the conservation stuff, uh, well, uh, the land acquisitions that we've been funding through the Conservation Trust. Um, you know, if it weren't for CPC, I don't know how much stuff they'd be able to do. Uh, but yeah, we can, we're not restricted to any certain amount. Um, we, years ago, they weren't as strict about having uh, monetary participation like we are now. Um, you know, if somebody comes in for multiple, we want them to have some skin in the game. We're not going to be financing 100%. Uh, Which we do. The state um, puts in a yeah. larger chunk. Uh, yeah, we do, and, and and you know the town. Obviously, we kind of we, we look at them as under a different set of guidelines uh, because it's the town. 
you know, and if, if it's something we don't pay for, well, the taxpayers are going to end up paying for it again uh, on their own. So anything we can fit in, uh, we will. Uh, the two projects that we're talking about are going to be completed this fall. Yeah. So that will be, yeah, they're both going yeah. to be done within the next two or three months. So, yeah. Uh, but yeah, we've had multiple uh, projects running at the same time. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Anybody else have a question? No? Tom, you okay? Eric? No, okay. Chris? You all set? Michael? I'm good, thanks. Corey? You all set? Okay. Marianne, anything else? Is that all right, Jenny? No, thanks, Ruth. Okay. I, I will look uh, look into the national grid with well, Kathy will, <laughs> or the yeah. director will. That's a good suggestion. Yeah, Thank you. you're already proving you're a great addition to the board, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> well, but you oh, know that you have from here, Russ. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but at least we know which way we're going, right? Uh, but, uh, and that's a good thing though, you know, we have a different variety of expertise on this board. Uh, it's a, it's a, it's an asset to be sure. Uh, anybody else waiting out there, Kim? No, the only that's other it. person that's there is Carolyn, which she was already on. So, okay. All right. Now is Kathy O'Malley still on the queue? No. Oh, okay. I, I think Kathy was just watching to watch. Kathy used to be very involved. She's been very involved. She was the president of the uh, uh, Historical Society. Uh, and uh, to say she was very involved is really an understatement. So she may have just been curious to see what was going on. All right. Well, um, we uh, should have had this a long time ago, uh, but pandemic goofing everything up. Uh, annually, we elect uh, officers. And uh, the uh, first uh, seat would be for chairman. Do I have any uh, volunteers or anyone who'd like to uh, volunteer someone else? No? I'd like to put forward the name of Russ Benetti. <laughs> I second that. Oh, uh, you got it. Okay. Um, uh, all those in favor of sentencing me for another, say aye. Aye. Okay. Uh, I'll abstain. I know myself too well. Uh, and then a vice chair uh, currently is Tom, and I'd like to nominate Tom again if Tom is willing to go. I'll second that. Okay. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Actually, we're supposed to do a roll call, aren't we? Uh, it'll be our secret. Uh, show of hands, it's it's unanimous. Eight, and I would imagine Merle would probably agree too, Tom. You guys well, thank so you all very much. Yeah, yeah. It uh, I think it'd be an interesting year coming up. So I'm you, about to. You do uh, have done appear. a great job, and I'm sure you'll continue doing a great job. Oh God, you never know. Uh, it, it, well, actually, it was three years ago, almost to the day that I was in the hospital, uh, waiting for a, a, a triple. Uh, so it, it's it's been an interesting couple of years. Uh, and I'm about to uh, make an appearance in front of the Community Preservation Committee in Plymouth. Uh, I'm a trustee of the Richard Sparrow House, which is the oldest house in town. It was built in 1640. And uh, we have two new additions, one of 1720 and one of about 1810. And we're part museum and gift shop. A uh, good friend of mine is the curator. and She talked me into being the uh, treasurer and a trustee. Um, Plymouth uh, should be interesting. <laughs> They're very, 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 very picky. The head of the committee, when I talked to him, uh, he said, oh, yeah, I'm familiar with Sparrow House. Uh, and I said, well, you know, it's the oldest house in town. Yeah, he says, but is it historic? Uh, <laughs> my response is, it's not one of the oldest, it's the oldest. So yeah, it's kind of historic. Uh, that's where we're starting on that one. So wish me luck. Um, okay, if anyone uh, 
would like to figure when we could meet again. Uh, we've got a couple things that we could get to. Uh, September is, God, it's hard awesome. to believe, isn't it? Forgive me, I'm the new guy, but do, do we do we anticipate applications? Yeah. Yeah, I think we'll see an application from the library. Um, I'm not sure if the playground will be ready uh, by then. And I expect um, we'll get some other applications as well, probably recreation things. I've uh, checked in with uh, the uh, Conservation Trust, see if they have any land acquisitions or anything coming up. So yeah, we'll have, we'll have a few things. Does Monday night still work for everybody for a meeting? Yeah, no, they're, they're, that, that's a good night. Okay. okay. At, at least for me, anyway. That works oh, for me. You, right me, and Corey, so far. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Monday's about the only night that's continually clear. Okay. All right. right. Now, um, Chris, do you come in from Boston? Well, when do you, you drive in? Do you, do you commute to? Uh, to Cohasset at night? Uh, we're on a hybrid setup. So when I am in the office, which is about two days a week, I'm in Westwood, Massachusetts. And uh -huh. rare occasions, mm -hmm. uh, I'll be off to Connecticut or New Hampshire, but I'm primarily working out of the seat I'm in now okay. or out of Westwood, Massachusetts. Okay. All right. Yeah. As you know, we can stick with seven o'clock. Um, I was just thinking if anyone has a commute on the train, 7 30 works as well. Um, Nice mm -hmm. thing about seven is you get out a little earlier than you would at seven thirty. So, how does the uh, let's see where's the calendar? Seventeenth. Uh, I was thinking more the tenth. Tenth of October. Uh, are we in Columbus Day applications by then? Oh, is it Columbus Day? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so much for that one. Uh, how's the seventeenth look? That's fine. Okay. Gives everyone three weeks. Yep. Okay. All right. So, uh, like I said, I try to set the. If it, if if ever a meeting is not convenient for you, please speak up. Uh, I will change at any time to accommodate uh, people who have commuting problems or whatever like that. Something comes up and it's a, not a good night for you. Don't be polite. Say, hey, no, that doesn't work for me. Uh, I try. I try to make it easy for everyone. Ross, are you thinking of Zoom on this the seventeenth? It'll probably be. Um, Tori, what do you think? By the seventeenth, will we be unzoomed? So the select board's going to go back to in person. I think this would probably be the last committee that's meeting virtually. I can't speak for planning. Maybe Chris, I don't know what what you guys are doing. Planning is continuing to be virtual. Okay, so so I guess planning would be the the remaining board. So all the other boards are shifting to in person. Doesn't mean we have to. I think the uh, it's still you know we're still legally allowed to be in vir virtual if we want. I uh, yeah. I mean, honestly, I think it should be a hybrid thing going forward. Uh, anyway, we should meet in person. I, I I think it's more beneficial to the communication between people. Uh, I know as as the chair, I like meeting in person because I get a feel of how a vote's going to go, uh, and 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 that that can help uh, but I think they should still continue with the hybrid because there are a lot of people who aren't going to be able to take the time either family commitments or getting down here from work or whatever that might be able to still participate through the zoom platform uh, so I, I would be in favor of uh, meeting in person and having zoom in case somebody wants to join in so uh, it's the more the merrier uh, especially with this committee, you know, some of the things we do um, can be rather controversial. Uh, and I think if people have both coming in uh, to attend ability as well as Zoom, it's going to cut down on people saying, oh, you know, you're meeting behind closed doors or when we weren't paying attention, you threw a fast one by us. Uh, so for that alone, I'd like to continue. But Let's uh, let's meet in person next time. Does it have to be in a town building? I mean, you know. If I believe it has to be. It does okay. 
so we 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 can't like commandeer the bar at the Red Lion and meet there. <laughs> <laughs> prior, prior to COVID, idea. we met in town buildings or <laughs> library, or other places. I personally yeah. like online. I like doing this. It's it's easier with my family. Yeah. And my work. Um, so that's my preference. But well, I understand meeting. Well, but but you know, about. you would if we're still on Zoom, mm -hmm. you can participate remotely. Mm -hmm. Uh, and and that doesn't interfere. You know, that'll help you uh, with with any. Uh, personal business you need to take care of. Uh, it'll still give you the opportunity to uh, participate and it'll give people the opportunity to hear what's going on. So, you know, if, if if it's allowable under the law to have some people Zooming and other people being there, I'm all for it. So I won't worry. I would, I would operate under the assumption that we can. You know, I would think a hybrid approach would be excellent, Russ. Yeah. Yeah, it's, you know, and if it doesn't work out, well, you know what they say, it's better to beg forgiveness than ask for permission. So. Okay. okay. Uh, no other questions from anyone? Move to adjourn. Uh, I, you read my mind, Eric. Anybody want to second that? Second. Okay. All in favor, better say aye. 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 Thank aye. you, Russ. Aye. Great meeting. Thank you, Thank guys. You Appreciate it. Uh, Thanks, everybody. You all are the best. Thank you. Nice meeting you all. Thank you. Bye, Ross. Have a good Have night. A Thank you. you very much. You're very welcome. Take care.